Tag in Atlantis. And believe it or not, she is here from Firefly and from Stargate Atlantis. Ladies and gentlemen, wait a moment. Are you ready? She is ready. Ladies and gentlemen, to a stage! Bombastic. It is. And Good this, word. These people know you. Thanks. And I have many questions. I love you for that. <laughs> I really do. Um, thank you for having me back in Germany. It feels so surreal to be at a convention again. Does anybody else feel that way? It's a little weird, right? I think we can all acknowledge the fact that it's a little strange. The photo op is a little odd. I didn't know what to do with my hands. I did this for a while, and I did this for a while, and I did that, and I was wrong. Anyway, we're all just getting through it. The new normal until we reach our normal again. Hopefully that's sooner than later. But nevertheless, I am so happy to be doing this again. And yeah. I just love seeing you. So thanks for coming. Okay. So uh, my friends aren't here, which means we can talk shit about all kinds of people. So <laughs> basically, uh, no questions are off limits. I'm serious. Look, I haven't been to a convention in two years, so I'm just feeling all kinds of brave today. Um, and I'm told to follow the spotlight, so you, sweet sir, you're up. No, I'm talking about you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that was too much. That was like at the bar at the end of the night when you turn the lights on and you're like, Okay, oh. everybody. Uh, my question is about life. Um, how was the reaction? from you and the team uh, regarding uh, the fans reacting to the cancellation and uh, what they did afterwards? Well, we, here's the thing. To, to, to backtrack slightly, I'm a backtracker, I apologize in advance. Um, we were told by the network on Firefly that no one was watching the show. <laughs> Our ratings were very bad. Um, and back in the day, ratings, live ratings were everything, right? So if you weren't doing really well in the ratings, your show was tanking. So we felt like the underdog from the very beginning. So it wasn't a huge surprise when we got canceled. If anything, it was kind of sadly a bit of a relief because we finally knew our fate. We knew what was going to happen and so we could get on with our lives, really, right? Like, it was just sort of this this moment of waiting and waiting and waiting to see what they would do and if they would pick us up or cancel us, and it was just a sickening way to live, really, right? Constantly in fear of losing your job. Um, so when it happened, we all just kind of said, okay, well, we were all experienced actors and we're used to things being canceled, and that's just the way it rolls sometimes. Joss was very upset and was determined to get us a home somewhere else. Um, and I really didn't think that would happen, to be totally honest with you. I just thought, okay, Joss, sure, honey. Uh, but it, it, you know, eventually, a couple years later, came to fruition. And I'll tell ya, the only reason we did that movie, things, the biggest reason why we were greenlit to do that movie was because the fans were so adamant about wanting more. So the movie was for the brown coats. And I feel, I love the movie. I'm very 
proud of it and everybody involved. I think it's beautiful. And I hope the ground folks loved it too, because really it was just made for you. Also, I love that there are Firefly fans here in Germany. I didn't totally know that. I, honestly, I think, I, you know, at the signing today, the autograph signing, I realized, oh wow, there are a lot of Firefly pictures coming through here. I honestly thought it would just be mostly Stargate fans, so that's kind of cool. Nice little surprise for me. Hello, sir. Hello. Okay, um, we often heard uh, today at the, the last day that it's uh, like drawing to a family when you are with the cast uh, for a few years. Yeah. Yesterday I asked uh, to David Nickel the question how it was to them to see uh, how one member of the family has to die, has to go to leave the family. Uh, to you the question is how, how was it uh, for you to replace someone, um, to be the new face uh, of someone who was loved so much. Who and is now, so loved, yeah. yes. Want me to be honest with you? Awkward. Awkward <laughs> and terrifying, that's another word I would use. To make matters worse, Paul and I had not just become friends, but we met a couple of years earlier and had become friends. So we were very social with each other. So you can imagine the phone call, if it were you, that you would get saying, hey, here's this incredible job opportunity for you. Your dream job, really. It, you don't have to leave your home. You can sleep in your own bed every night. You don't have to travel for work. It's a hit show already. The catch is you have to replace one of your best friends on the show. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a very happy phone call to get, and it was also a giant gut punch for me. Very strange, um, and continued to be strange. When I started the show, there were, my first day of work, there were picketers outside of the studio, bring Carson Beckett back, big signs. And I had to cross the picket line. Also, one of my first scenes was performing brain surgery on another well-loved character on the show. You know, Keller is in charge of, of basically um, making Dr. Weir live again. So it was hell, I would say, for a little while. Um, <laughs> luckily, Jason and David Hewlett um, were great at teasing me and making me feel like their little sister and made me drop my guard a little bit and feel comfortable almost right away. And then Paul got to come back to the show, which was even better. Um, and I'm very happy and so, so grateful to say that Paul is still one of my best friends. He is like a brother to me. I would say I talk to Paul every other day. He's a big phone guy. Like he's the kind of person where He'll text you, and if you text back, he immediately calls you. <laughs> it's so annoying. Do you, know when, do you know when you're looking at, like, you, I'm busy. Like, I'm doing something. I'm out somewhere, and I respond with a text, and then the phone rings, and I'm like, damn it, Paul. <laughs> Hi. And usually it's, he doesn't really need much, right? Hey, buddy, how are you? And I'm like, no, I can't chat right now. I love Paul so much. He's in my corner always. I'm in his corner always. Um, so, if anything, I'm just really grateful that our friendship continued after that. And it was great to see you two together in the show. Thanks. Yeah, it was weird for us, right? Because we're friends. We were like, oh, this is so strange. It's you act. <laughs> <laughs> is that the voice you're going to do? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I have to thank. <laughs> First of all, welcome to Germany. Thank you very and, much. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. I have one question, yes. Okay. You're allowed uh, to ask two. Okay. Perfect. I think I make the rules right now until something pops up on the screen saying I don't make the rules. So <laughs> let's just go um, with it. You've 
been fabulous on both shows. I liked it more on um, Firefly. Fair. And I'm interested, what was more difficult to learn, the mechanical terms or the medical? Medical, stuff? medical, medical, medical. <laughs> <laughs> and here's why, because the technical terms on Firefly were fictional. A lot of those machines don't exist. Yeah, obviously. You know, yes. the, the tools I used, our wonderful props master would come over, or our props assistant would come over with a box and say, pick one. <laughs> and I would pick one and pretend to do something with it. So, substantially easier. Being a doctor is really tough. They had um, a consultant for me on the set of, of SGA who was a doctor. Real life brain surgeon who would tell me what I was doing right and wrong. So imagine you're replacing your friend on the show, you have tons of lines to learn, and then you have an actual doctor hanging out off camera telling you what you're doing wrong. <laughs> Fun times all around. Does it have a shiny time? Yes, just a shiny time. Yeah, exactly. Playing doctors, it, 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 it's difficult. Anybody who does it regularly, I admire so very much. I did a, an episode of The Good Doctor. Do you guys have The Good Doctor here in Germany? Um, and watching those actors in action have to spout the doctor babble was astounding. It was so, I know how hard that is to do, and um, they, uh, they were working very, very hard, and just know how much effort goes into playing a role like that all the time. Thanks. You guys are very nice to do a for every answer. That's very sweet. You don't get that in North America. Yes. Hi, thank you for being here. My so, pleasure. I have got two questions. Um, I always wonder what was the most difficult scene to shoot for you personally in Firefly and also for the cast as like together. Um, the most difficult stuff usually it had something to do with the circumstances, meaning a lot of the time when we're shooting, you don't realize that we're in extreme heat or extreme cold. And that can really make or break a day. A lot of the stuff in Firefly that we were doing um, when we visited other planets, I don't know if you realize, but all the other planets look the same. Uh, and that's because it's a Southern California desert. And uh, it was hot very, very hot. So we had a few really stuffy days. I think in particular the episode Janestown, we shot a lot of it outside and we were just absolutely dripping sweat. And I remember Nathan was wearing that suede coat, just, you know, and he would sort of still like this. I'm like, you okay, buddy? He's like, I'm so hot. <laughs> so that kind of thing can really break your concentration. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, the, the easiest stuff was definitely the stuff around the dining room table. Those were our favorite scenes. Thank okay, you. So, and, and the second question. Um, I was in America like t 2014 and I did all the tourist stuff and I came across a house which was called Vienna's house and it, I looked so familiar and then it struck me and then I wondered if that was the place where you should promo food. Yes, that's what? the house. It was a Frank Lloyd Wright house. Oh, right. Yes. Cool. And they, we did a whole photo shoot in that big, beautiful house. So yes, that's the house. Thank you. Good eye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, guys, this is exciting for me. This is like a Kaylee, and now we have another Kaylee. Oh, this makes me happy. Um, so, um, you talked about your film Serenity, and um, so I was wondering, because they also made a lot of um, comic books um, yes. that continued the story, and I just recently started reading some of them, and I was wondering whether you ever read them, and what you thought about KB in the books, um, yeah. I read a little bit of them. It's weird, right, because for us it's, it's bittersweet. It's like story continued without us. <laughs> so if anything, I just have seething jealousy that I can't 
play those, you know, scenes on screen. But I mean, it has to live on in some way, and I'm glad it does. And from what I hear, people really enjoy the comics, and we do have them at home in my house. I'm that creepy actor who has my own memorabilia in my guest room. People are like, these Firefly books? I'm like, yes, there. I have no shame. <laughs> Um, I have actually a second question. Did you take something from the set, like from the from the serenity or I, I didn't oh. I didn't take anything off the bat because I didn't know you were allowed to take stuff. I just you know, I I grew up in the business, in the film business, and I was always told not to take things, not to steal, right? Um, and my friends, my colleagues we're stealing everything all over the place. But like, I, I just didn't know that, was, that you could do that. So now I do steal um, and, and keep things for myself and to give away and auction off and all that. It's fun. But Nathan took a lot of things and he gave me um, the Kaylee's room door sign and the hammock from the engine room. Um, and he kind of gifted them to me in like a weird like, and you can have this. And I was like, thank you. Make it going to me. Um, <laughs> but I, I've since auctioned them off for charity, so I have nothing left of the show. Uh, you live and learn. You live and learn, right? Now that's why I steal. Don't tell my kids. <laughs> Please don't tell my son, okay? I teach you. him not to be a thief. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I started watching Family Law because of oh. you and you were awesome in it. Thank you. Where where did you watch Family Law? Online. I don't even care. I love you. Thank you. I pirate that. That's fine. I was wondering, uh, could you maybe talk a little bit about uh, shooting that and Whose idea was it to put uh, Victor Gadra in gym shorts? Oh, not Victor's idea. <laughs> Family Law, for those of you that don't know, it's a show that um, I started shooting in Canada um, right before COVID hit, actually. And we took a little break, and then we shot all the way through the pandemic, season one. And uh, before we aired season one, we got picked up for season two, which is very nice. So we just shot season two, and season one is just starting to air. <laughs> so it just, uh, it's midway through airing in Canada, and it's going to be airing in Italy and uh, Brazil, or in Brazil now, Iceland. So basically I'm telling you it's getting to you at some point. Um, and I play this disgraced lawyer who's a real hot mess. Her heart's in the right place, though. And Victor Garber plays my dad. Um, and my character has not spoken to her dad for over 30 years and she is an alcoholic and she commits a big faux pas and shows up to court drunk and gets fired from her law firm and has to find a new job if she wants to keep her license to practice law so she reaches out to daddy for a job. The catch is he also has two other children from two other marriages working at his law firm. So not only does she have to swallow her pride and become well again, um, she has to learn to work with these siblings of hers. And to your point, Victor, his character likes to run on the treadmill and the running gag is he runs in short shorts. <laughs> and my character gets to make fun of him all the time, which is great fun for me, really. <laughs> But uh, the, the cast has gotten very, very close. They're some of my very best friends in the world. I'm so proud of them. I can't wait for you guys to see what they can do. I think they're incredibly talented actors. And uh, yeah, so eventually it will arrive in Germany. Family law. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Spotlight go now. Yes, it's very exciting up here. Like circles around the room. Hello, thank you for coming. My pleasure. Several years, years ago, you we were playing on a series called Higher Ground. How did you like playing this character you played there? And was it hard for you? I. Such a different character. I 
loved it. I loved doing Higher Ground. I was 17 at the time, um, and it was this really lovely show about a high school up in the wilderness for troubled teens. So it dealt with a lot of subject matter that wasn't dealt with on TV back then. Um, and I think our biggest claim to fame on that show was Hayden Christensen, who was one of the, the kids in the show. Um, and I remember it being really great fun. And it's actually one of those jobs that follows me around. I get asked about that one quite a bit. It's so funny to me that it seemed, we only did 26 episodes, but it seems to have struck a chord with people. So it makes me happy. Thank, Thank you. you. You are. Hi. Hi. Um, can you tell us a bit about the differences between an established uh, fandom like uh, Atlantis, where you came on the show while it was already uh, running for a couple of years regarding Firefly, where everything was new, where somebody had the interesting idea to first in Chinese and stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's definitely different. With Firefly, it was such an odd concept that we weren't sure anybody was going to get it. I mean... We did. I'm so glad. <laughs> really, I am. Um, but, you know, it was, it, it was out of the box, so we were all in it together, and I think that's why the cast is still really close, and we're, we're still like a family, because... We went through this intense experience together where we created, helped create something that was different and unique. With Stargate, it was kind of like, I don't know, stepping into like a high school with a bunch of cool kids <laughs> where you were like the newbie, you know? Hi, hi. Just trying to know my lines and staying conspicuous. Um, and at that point, the Stargate franchise was such a well-oiled machine. I mean, they've done SG-1 for 10 years and, and SGA for so long, and you know, the set was completely all the time. It was basically like, from what I hear, turning on a switch and the gate would, you know, everything would light up gorgeously. It was really something to behold when you walked onto that set, especially the first time for me. Um, and intimidating, right? I mean, when a fan base is already established, you just feel like you have that much more to prove. Um, and, you know, some, I, I, I felt like an outsider a lot, um, being a newer character that stepped in late and, re and replaced Beckett and all that, it just felt really like I was new, like I was a newbie. And when I hear from people like you say that they, they loved the show and they appreciated Keller coming onto the show, I'm not kidding you when I say it means a lot to me. So, thanks for accepting me <laughs> to the fandom. It's really nice. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. I think you're next, don't worry. Um, so, uh, whenever you join Stargate Atlantis, uh, in the storyline, the expedition has been able to go back to Earth for a while. Um, I'm not sure if Dr. Kelly was supposed to be just off screen for the first few seasons, or if she joined around then, but whenever the first episode happened and they all have to decide whether or not they're going to go to this unknown place and never be able to get back, if you had to make a choice like that, if you had to go through the gate and go, it might be wonderful, it might be dangerous, but I have no idea if I'll ever get home again, would you take that risk or would you say, I'm oh, happy where I am? So do you know that question you get where People are like, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? So when people ask me that, I say, a house cat. <laughs> I'm, I'm a really, really good homebody. <laughs> New, I'm, I'm a lot like McKay. New adventures terrify me. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I would make that plunge. I wonder if I would earlier in life, before I had a kid. See, now I have this kid that I love a lot, and I don't ever want to be away from him. So embarking on an adventure, like stepping through a stargate into the unknown and leaving him behind as a mom, it's just simply not happening. You know what I mean? But you could go and tell me. Like, Assuming I get back. <laughs> Assuming you get back, see? Thanks very much. <laughs>
Regarding uh, Atlantis, what was your first or your initial reaction when you thought Keller is going to end up with a K? We get that question a lot in that same tone. It's true. They go. He's a lovely guy, but every time he joins the sick bay, he has a splinter under his nail and he's whining like a baby. He's allergic against lemons. He gets haunted by lemons. So, keep going. No. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Speaking for Jen Keller only, not me. Um, <laughs> Jennifer and Rodney have a kinship. They have a lot of similarities when you really think about it. They both feel a little bit out of their element all the time. They're both kind of whiny babies. Um, and having said that, they're opposite in a good way, in that Jen brings Rodney down a little bit. She calms him down. Also, she knows that the smart thing to do is to go for the intellectual connection, not just the physical connection. <laughs> and his intellect is what makes her fall in love with him. So there you go. Thank you very much. I'll give you my thoughts on the next year. Gotta say something cheeky, right? It's very freeing up here with a microphone after two years, let me tell you. I'm sure my cast members are shivering in their little boots. <laughs> Hi. So Firefly was uh, sabotaged, canceled for multiple reasons. Um, did any of you have any idea what that would become? And then after the fact, you would start getting Atlantis going into an established sci-fi franchise. Did you know what that would mean? Become part of this wonderful large family? I did. I really. I mean, I. Firefly obviously came first, and we were under the impression no one was watching the show. So the the first time I realized that anyone cared about the show at all was my very first convention, which was in Blackpool, England. I was with Summer and Nathan. It was a Buffy convention, so we were under the impression that there would be only Buffy fans there. But I would love a free trip to England. So, you know, it was sort of like Nathan was like, Are you going? I was like, Oh, are you going? Okay, I'll go. Fine. Summer, you're going too. Um, <laughs> she's like, Okay. Uh, and we got there and were blown away by the 
cosplay that we saw. There's a lot of Firefly there. And we had a big long line for photo ops, and we looked at each other and went, maybe someone is watching the show. <laughs> and it grew from there into the most amazing, incredible uh, fandom, and I love them very much. I hope they know that. I tell them often, but just in case they forget, I tell them again. Um, and with Stargate, I mean, it's intimidating, right? Being the new person. So at any time I go to a predominantly Stargate convention, I'm just very grateful if anybody wants uh, my autograph. <laughs> it's like, oh, you really do like me. <laughs> I don't think that'll ever go away. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who was here first? Sorry. No. There's a spot right up there. Okay, you yes, can yes, Sorry. Okay. This is just a follow up. I, uh, so, to the question working with Nathan. Uh, so, Nathan is in the show Rookie. Um, I haven't seen the last season, so maybe I'm wrong, but uh, was there any question or did anyone approach you to work with him in this show? Well, I did Castle. Um, but I haven't uh, had the chance to do the rookie yet. I'll say, you never know. What I'm trying to do is get me kind of camera law on my show. I feel like the table should turn now. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see. Okay, I'm told I have time for one last question. I'm sorry. I, in fact, don't need the rules. I know that's shocking. Yes, do the last question, no pressure, but make it good. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I uh, thought first, thank you for being here. And My pleasure. There is this episode shortly after you arrived in Atlantis with Amanda Tapping, where you were stuck in this hole together with McKay. Trio. Yeah, and where that, you so. did this trick to win a free beer in the bar. And after this aired, I actually used it a lot to get free beers in Berlin. And so I asked you if you ever really got a free beer through this trick. No. <laughs> that, that actually works. Yes, it works. So I started physics back then. And I'm going to do that them. now. Yes, I mean, works. I'm not a beer drinker. I can show you. Can it work for wine? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm really happy that worked for you. That really just makes doing the show worth it. <laughs> I promise you, I will be at one of the time to you. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Uh, guys, they're going to kick me off the stage. But before they kick me off, just want to say, again, it's my first convention back in a while. Thank you for making it so easy. Thank you for everything that you do to make us actors feel appreciated. Our, you know, our egos are fragile. So <laughs> this means a lot to all of us. So thank you. Thank you. We talk to each other on the phone a lot, a lot. But Se I, security. But I, but I said, I said how you were one of those people where, like, you'll text me and I'll text you back. But as I text, I text you back and I press send and then you call me right away. I'm not very technical, so I'd rather have a phone conversation where you know the Always. kids, the kids nowadays are like, and she's so fast at it. It takes me forever. I'm blind. You know, I've, like, I've helped him. Like his social media, the fact that he's on social media, Paul, why are you on social media? Because of, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I only on Twitter. You do Instagram. We're getting I, uh, working I, on it. I don't. Working I, I don't on think Instagram. I've posted six times because I forget how to use it. But she's a, a wizard, you know? Like, amazing. And uh, so it's been good. Uh, have you guys had a great day? <laughs> you guys
guys had such a great time. It's so good to be back here. You guys are amazing. And thank you for coming here to support us. And, and we get a chance to come and see you. A lot of friendly faces that we've seen over the years. So thank you so much, guys. It's so great. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow.